Hello, my name is Jeremy. I'm a fabricator and mechanic, and I'm on a journey to build a 1937 Auto Union Type C. Uh, on this episode, I'm going to be starting the, uh, the adapter plate between the transmission and the uh, engine. So we're going to be going from a Mercedes V12 uh, Type M137 to a Subaru 6B, and uh, I will show you in this one, we'll probably get down to uh, drilling the alignment hole in the center, what we're going to use to align it, first of all. We'll get to uh, aligning it with both the engine and transmission, and go from there. Let's get to the video. And this is just a uh, view of them both. It is out of a 2001 CL600. There are three valves per cylinder, uh, overhead cam, dual plug per cylinder. Pretty, pretty trick, all aluminum, aluminum block, aluminum heads, aluminum pan, everything. Um, 424 pounds, and it's got a circular bell housing, which is nice, with a small flywheel, which is also nice because that other thing important to note is that the starter mounts to the engine. So what that means is that I will not have to rely on the starter for a little two, two liter Subaru to crank over a six liter V12 or 5.8, whatever it is, much bigger V12. Which brings us to this guy. This is a 2017 WRX six speed manual training, TY751 I believe. But I picked this because it's a six-speed, which is really nice, but it is cable shift. And the cables come out of the right-hand side of the transmission and run forward, which is exactly wh where I need them to be to hook up to um, a shifter that is on the right-hand side of the cockpit in a single-engine or a single-seat car. This weighs 150 pounds, I believe it said. Let's at least get them set over there together and do a little little baby mock-up. So while editing this, I discovered that I don't have the footage from the start of this. So what I did was drilled a hole and reamed it out to 12 millimeters to line up with the input shaft of the transmission, clamped it to the bell housing of the transmission, used transfer punches through the bolt holes, and then drilled them all out to 10 millimeter, or drilled them out to accept a 10 millimeter tap tapped them all so that it would bolt to the transmission and then we're starting off from there here we go we have a new piece of equipment in the shop a nice craftsman lathe 12 inch swing i believe it's a model 101 it's very dirty and needs to be tightened up but hey it's a good tool and it came with a lot of uh tooling quick change and all that and it has worked enough that i have made this little guy right here it steps into the crank hub uh, pilot where you're like normally your torque converter or throw out bearing would go or not throw out pilot bearing would go and it uh, I messed it up so that's why it's two pieces and this is uh, this is three quarter inch all thread turned down to 12 millimeter to match this guy the uh, input shaft which will match this guy will line the plate with the uh, motor so that the the center line of the transmission is the same as the center line of the engine. So this is a very tight tolerance. I had to drive it in with a uh, socket over here and a four pound dead bull hammer. Here are the measurements in case you are curious. So the inner, so this crank has two steps in the uh, pilot here. So it's Roughly, the depths are, are roughly, because they're not critical, but the bottom step, I made five-eighths of an inch um, deep, and the, so this is the, the flange of the crankshaft is out here, and then this is going towards the front of the motor. And so the inner step is 1.260. I didn't do metric because I don't care, because I just cut the, the guide to the same thing, and I, my brain works in Imperial, so... 1.260 inches for the inner step and 1.380 
for the outer step here. And the outer step is roughly an inch um, deep. And here's some more measurements if you want to know what those are. And then this is threaded so I can take off this nut and then either make a, a three quarter inch insert with like a grease nipple or turn in a three quarter inch bolt to remove it. Or I guess you could even probably slide hammer it, but I don't want to bang on it that much, hurt the thrust bearing. Um, but anyway, the center comes out. It's a one-time thing because you'll never get it lined up again because it's th it's threaded not perfectly. So it's all turned straight right now because it was threaded together tight um, when I turned all this down. So this is all concentric. But if you loosen this up and turn it any, it will never get it right again without a lot of struggle. So it's a one-time use kind of thing, but it fits down in here very tightly. I already have the transmission. This is the transmission side of the plate. I did a bunch of layout and messed these two holes up, but this is the new center line of the uh, transmission. I messed it up because I went off of the dowel pins, but they're not actually... They are directly across, but they're not um, perpendicular to the, the case, the split in the case. So this will be what I use to line it up to the motor. I'll get it up where it is level, and then I'll take some transfer punches through the backside of these holes and drill the dowels. They have to be very precise, but nothing else does. At, well, I mean, everything has to be precise, but these have to be the most precise, and then these just have to be within a few thousandths, but the the dowels have to be really, really close. And I got these really close. I had to uh, take a die grinder and die grind out behind them so you could get the, the transfer punch to go through the dial pin hole. And then I just transfer punched all of the, the bell housing bolts. There's eight. And they're all in the plate, um, already drilled and tapped. One thing I will have to do is put this back on to make sure I have the top correct. I believe this is the top because it has the two bolt holes close together. Yeah, and this is where the starter goes. So yeah, this is the top, but I'll mark that just to keep from having a catastrophe. But you can see it's already got the dowel pins in this plate. I reamed them very close to size and they are very good press fit and they're actually uh, looser in the transmission so it wasn't planned but the transmission bolts up nicely it's got a little bit because this is not quite deep enough on this recess that I drilled but I don't want to go any deeper so I still have a, a, as much uh, height as I can to center it on our alignment stud there so I'll set the camera up and uh, show moving the block and lining this up and doing the transfer punch and stuff. Now that I have the process ironed out on the transmission, the easy half will do the motor on camera because it will require uh, making some uh, studs that are pointed. So you turn them in here and then you put your plate up against it and whack the plate to act as a transfer punch. So I'll have to make those on the lathe. Luckily I have I got extra M10 by one and a half bolts, and that's what I'm using for bolting the engine and tranny together is all metric stuff, because the motor is metric, the tranny is it, it's Japanese metric, but it's metric. But I'll keep, everything I do, I'll do European or American metric, because much easier to find here, Japanese metric, only where I absolutely have to have it, so hopefully nowhere the only place I think I'll have to get bolts is for the the uh, throw out uh, the slave cylinder. But everywhere else, hopefully, I won't have to deal with it. I just, I don't care. Metric is metric, but I prefer U.S. slash European metric just because I'm in the U.S. and that's easier for me to acquire than uh, Japanese metric, which typically Japanese uh, metric has a different thread pitch and different sized heads for the same bolts. So like Japanese stuff uses a lot of 12 and 14 millimeter fastenings. Uh, US and European stuff uses a lot of 13, 15, 18, 17 sometimes. Japanese will use 17 and 18 as well, I believe. Everybody uses 10 millimeter headed bolts, of course, but 
uh, all of this is actually the heads are all either male or female torques, but the thread pitch is the same as U.S. stuff. So the bolt holes in the bell housing are ten by one and a half. So I made the bolts that hold the transmission in the same ten by one and a half, just because it's easier. There's a test hole I did. Cool. Let's get at it. So problem the first is that with this plate hung vertical so that the transmission the split in the transmission is vertical and therefore the axle uh, axles are vertical for this to match the transmission to be horizontal so the CV joints are horizontal uh, looks like we're gonna have a couple first of all this hole, this bolt hole, it's one of the bell housing bolts, lines up very close to this dowel pin. So I think I'm going to have to uh, rotate the plate, and then when I put it in the car, I'll have the motor maybe five degrees off of vertical. Or I may put the motor in vertical and have the transmission off. I don't know how much that effect that will have. I'll have to look into it about if the transmission's slightly out of horizontal, if that'll have any detrimental effects on the CV joints, because I don't think it would, because they would be equal, just opposite numbers. Uh, also, I made this. So this is a eight by 10 and a half uh, bolt that I cut off and then I turned it to a nice point in the lathe and then I filed flats on it so you can turn it into the bell housing bolt holes that you can't get to the back of. Turn that in and then it'll be have a little bit of the point sticking out and then you whack the bell housing or the plate rather with a hammer and this acts as a uh, center punch basically to mark the bolt holes on the front side of the plate. This will enable marking all of the uh, bolt holes that we can't get to the back side of. Luckily, both of the dial pin holes we can, which is nice. This dial pin is a little close, but it's still over an inch or like three quarters of an inch. And then this bolt hole We'll just have to go and see. Some of them might have to, you know, be helicoiled or something. Have an insert put in. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out as we go. The bell housings are closer in diameter than I was expecting, if I'm honest. I figured the Subaru, since it's such an odd shape, would not be anywhere near lining up. But it's also very near circular if you just look at the bolt holes. They're very nearly circular so the mercedes bell housing is totally circular so we'll see i'll bring you back when there's a new development but i think i'll just rotate it a little bit to the right and then overfill the transmission on the dipstick slightly that sounds good let's do that figured i would show you doing this at least one time so i already have drilled out the dial pins for the motor they're all lined up with this center and this hole comes through here from the front so that's one of them done but that leaves all of these that are blind so we'll take our pin and we'll go over here opposite of where our current uh, first bolt is we will screw this in I might have made it too long so we might have to cut here and then might just get lucky. Sorry, I'm gonna do this while holding on here. I'm gonna set this down. So let me screw this guy in until just the tip is sticking out. Here you can see we have a little nice little center punch hole sticking out. Put this guy on.
good and tight. We'll double check and our bolt is right here. So we'll give it a good whack. Undo our bolt. Some more flex. Pull it loose. Ugh. So there is our center punch mark. It's very close to this bolt, but these line up much closer than I liked. You can see this dowel is very close as well. We'll just have to be gentle and hope for the best. We'll go as small as we can and we might have to um, helicoil this and re-drill it after the countersunk head is in. I'll have to relieve the head of the bolt. But, but that's the basic idea. And then we'll just move this to every other hole that needs it. There are, this already has one in it, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine uh, from this direction and one in from this way is for a total of 10. And then there are eight that hold the transmission to here. So that's uh, the rest of the procedure. We'll bring you back when there's more done.